Hi, friends, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking AWS CloudFormation. This is Amazon's infrastructure as code solution. It's a really powerful service in AWS and core to a lot of the other services. I'll start with just a few slides to cover the concepts, then we'll come back out here to the console and see it in action. You might have a fairly small or simple project, but even so, let's say that you need one EC2 instance, another EC2 instance, you want an auto scaling group around those, you also need a load balancer, and maybe a database or two just to build a simple website for your users. You can imagine that having to spin up all those resources manually could be tedious and time consuming, and you might not remember all the details of how you did it, so you might get a slightly different setup every time you do. And this isn't even a large or complicated project. Some companies have hundreds or thousands of infrastructure resources they need to spin up, and dozens or hundreds of people doing that work at any given time. Wouldn't it be easier to say, I want, and then define the resources and configuration that you need? Two EC2 instances, an auto scaling group, a load balancer, an RDS database, one VPC with one public subnet and one private subnet. And then all those things are just automatically built. Well, that's basically what you get with CloudFormation. Here's an example of a CloudFormation template where you define the resources you want in JSON or in YAML, and then you deploy it. This will then spin up all of those resources, whether it's a VPC, a database, an EC2 instance, a load balancer, or any other kind of resource. The benefits of this are huge. It should be obvious, but CloudFormation offers time savings, a lot of time savings, over doing the work manually. It's repeatable. You run a template in a development environment, let's say, and then you can run that same template in a test environment and know that you're going to get exactly the same infrastructure and resources with exactly the same configuration. Changes can also be made in code, so it's easy to track what changed. You can even check the templates into source control, just like you would any other code, so you can track changes that way as well. Also, you can tear down all the resources at once with the click of a button. You can get more accurate estimates of what things will cost by simply using the CloudFormation template. This is pretty huge. And finally, you can use CloudFormation to deploy across accounts and across regions. All right, so enough with the slides. Let's head out to the console for some hands-on. In the demo, we'll use one of the sample templates provided by AWS and then deploy it. And then we'll also take a look at the template itself and revisit some of the things that we saw here in the slides. In the console, let's navigate to CloudFormation, and we'll start off by creating a stack. There's three options here. Either a template is ready to use, you can use a sample template, or you can create a template in the designer. In the real world, you'll probably have a template already, but I want to make sure you can follow along with the demo, so we're going to use one of the samples provided by AWS. The template will choose We'll go with the simple category here, LAMP stack. If you don't know, LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, which will deploy a single EC2 instance and a MySQL database, and we'll be able to see a web page when we're all done. So select that. And I want to quickly show you the designer. So say view and designer. And this designer will give you a nice visual of what you're building. You might have to zoom out a little bit or click on this top button here so everything's visible. If you mouse over these, you'll get more detail. So this is the EC2 instance. We've got a security group for that. And then down here on the bottom, we have the code that's actually defining this deployment. You can make changes up on the top in the designer, but you can also just make them here in code. This is my preference. But here you'll see things like the database name, the database user, scrolling down, more information about the database. You'll see our instance type here. So we're using a T2 small when we create the EC2 instance. Scrolling down some more, you'll see different mappings for the instance types. There's a lot here. More information about what we're going to install on the instance. So you'll see index.php, for example. We'll be able to navigate to that web page when we're done. Here's what's on the web page, and so on. So it can be pretty instructive just to come in here and kind of peruse around a file to see what you're getting and see how that matches up with the things that we've already learned. All right, to get out of the designer, click on close right here. And we'll leave. We didn't actually create that stack before we got into the designer. So let's start with the sample template 
and choose lamp again. This time we're going to go through the next. We'll give the stack a name, and a stack is basically a collection of resources that are going to get spun up. It doesn't matter what you choose here, I'm going to say my lamp stack. There's going to be a few things that are needed to spin up this stack. We need a database name, we'll need a password. So I'll enter that and confirm. Database user will go with admin. We'll leave instance type the same. And then for key name, I have some existing key pairs. So I'll just select this one here for Linux. We'll say next. All the defaults here, next. And then finally, create stack. All right, now here you can watch the progress of everything that it's building for us. If you refresh, you'll see security groups are being created, the web server instance. If you look at the resources tab, you'll also see those resources along with the IDs. Depending on what you're standing up, this can take a little while, but you're able to monitor the progress here. If there's any kind of failures or errors, those will show up here as well. But I'll pause the video and be right back. All right, complete. So here on the left, you'll see the stack overall is complete. You'll see the events there in the middle. And again, going back to resources, I've got the web server instance and the security group. Now, if we go to the outputs tab, here's ultimately why we were doing this was to get a website. If we click on this website URL, open this in a new tab, there's our web page. So you could take this CloudFormation template and run it a hundred times and you would get exactly the same setup, the same instance, the same security groups, the same web page and all of that. So going back to that benefit of being repeatable, that's because it's deploying exactly the same code every time. All right, so that's how to create a stack, but let me show you how easy it is to delete a stack or delete a collection of resources as well. You saw that we have an EC2 instance that was created. If we go to a new tab here, and go to EC2 and instances, as you might expect, there is our running instance. Let's go tear all of this down. You can do that by just saying delete here on the top right. And the message deleting this stack will delete all stack resources, which is exactly what we want. We'll say delete stack. This might take a minute, but this is a really handy way to delete everything at once. So if you had, say, 10 EC2 instances and some databases and load balancers and whatnot, having to do each one of those manually is pretty tedious and time consuming. But here, with just the click of a button, you can delete everything that was initially stood up as part of this CloudFormation stack. All right, so our delete is in progress here. If we come to events, we should also get delete events. So still in progress. I'll refresh again and we don't have any stacks anymore. So if we come back to our list of instances and do a refresh here, we shouldn't see this running one anymore. And there it is, it's terminated. It'll eventually drop off my list, but that termination happened because of what we were doing in CloudFormation. So that's it. That's how to create infrastructure using code. If you found that helpful, give me a thumbs up so the video can spread to more people and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.